Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to discuss a product that we've had available for many years but haven't actually demoed it. Basically it's a speed line pouch. This is a pouch that enables you to connect two floats right next to each other with a breakaway system that deploys the line that's in the pouch. Now it's quite important how you pack the pouch to prevent it from tangling. I'm just going to demo how to untangle the line first of all. Those of you who have used float lines, these polyethylene ropes, will know that when it's new it's quite tangly, it's quite twisted. So it's very important to get those twists out and get the line nice and supple so when it deploys out the bag it flows freely. You don't want any entanglements. For the sake of the demo we're just going to use a 15 meter length. I'll unravel this and show you how to get the twists out. Inside here you can go up to 40 meters of float line. Some guys also use a blue water bungee but you can only fit about a 10 meter blue water bungee which will stretch out to 20 meters. So let's unravel this and get all the kinks out and show you how to prep it. As you can see straight from the manufacturer there's quite a twist in it. So it's important to work along the float line and get all these twists out. In one hand I've got a rag to save, uh, to prevent the skin from burning, it will get hot. You just keep doing this. This is obviously the first one and it's quite twisted. Now we'll do it four or five more times. Second time around, far less twists. So you get the point, do that four or five times, running your rag up and down and this will give it quite a nice soft state and easy to deploy. Another tip to help is really stretch it, give it a good stretch. It seems to set all those fibers makes the line a lot easier to handle. When it's new, they can be really awkward to use. You see it goes much more limp and much easier to use. So, for obvious reasons, one end gets attached to the float and the other end to your blue water bungee or another float or the float line, the joint to the next one. So you can have a single float or a double system maybe an 11 one side and a 20 the other side. So this will keep the two floats quite close together, much less likely to get tangled with your buddies who are diving with you. When your fish sinks the first float, this will deploy and eventually it'll catch up to the second float. Now the breakaway system is pretty simple. Once it's connected to a float, you need to realize what buoyancy that float will be. In this case, it's a 20 liter. So you need at least 20 kilos to pull that underwater. So you need something that will break less than 20 kilos, say 18 for instance. If you're using a smaller float, an 11 liter, you'd only need about 10 kilos. Now, we use elastic bands. There's many, many different sizes. You can go to your local stationery shop and try different versions. There's long ones, short ones. So once you've established the right band to use, keep a bunch of spares. You can clip them onto your float or have a small pack in your dive bag. And the point of these is to tell what the brake strain is. Quite simply, hook it onto a scale. So quite simply to test your brake strain of the different elastics, hook it on a scale, put something through and haul on it until it breaks. It's one kilo, two kilo, three. So that broke at three. A single loop broke at three. So if we were to double that, that would give us six kilos. So six kilo is probably a little bit less than you need for an 11 liter, but you could also double up on the rubbers themselves. So two in a single state will be six kilos. Double that, you've now got 12 kilos. Put a third one in, 
you've now got sufficient to submerge, to break just before the 20 litre float submerges. Obviously, the bigger the band, the more force you need. So this is the speed line pouch with no line. As I said before, you can put whatever length you want in it. We're going to demo today with 40 meters of four mil. The pouch itself has a heavy duty stainless steel slide to enable you to pack. The front closed end also has a Velcroed throat. This allows the bunch to come out if you get an entanglement. We'll demo that. So the way of wrapping this line to fit inside here, there's two methods. The simple one is a figure of eight. I have demoed this on our previous float line videos, how to use it. The reason for the figure of eight is you not setting a twist. There's no twist in that because you've wrapped one way and then the other. Just to demonstrate that falls apart without any entanglement. So now I'm going to wrap the full 40 meter and show you how to pack it. So there is 40 meters wrapped. Take it off my arm. Pouch is open. We now need to get that mass inside there without tangling the tag end. As long as you keep hold of it, the loops will stay together. Once in the pouch, you can start stuffing it to the back. When all in, close the zip. Make sure everything's neat. Reattach the Velcro. So that's one way of packing your pouch. The other is obviously just to stuff it in slowly, piece by piece, use a stick to prod it down. That'll come out easier, but it'll take you 20 minutes to pack 40 meters in here. You might not even pack it because of the undulations would pack it really full. Um, personally, I think 30 meters is more than adequate. Now to demonstrate, Here is the elastic. We want that elastic to be connected to this end and to the webbing. Feed it through the webbing. Remember this elastic must be specific to the boy you're gonna be pulling on. In this case, we're using a small one. So you would have clipped your float line to the end of the tag end of the main float line. And now you attach your elastic we now connected so the one end is connected to the clip the other is still connected to the pouch with the elastic in between when a large fish takes it down as you'll see in the underwater shot that will break and then feed out If there's any loops that pull out like this, it's not a problem, it'll keep going. That Velcro now you saw popped, that is specifically to let out any entanglement that as you see, just untangles itself because there's no twist in it. That's the figure of eight. So as I keep pulling this, so the lines will keep coming out. Obviously in the water, it's a lot more stable this will keep pulling. You might have a point where the whole bunch will come out in one piece. If that does, again, all will self unravel, especially in water. There will be no knots, nothing knots, everything deploys. Some of you might have noticed there's a mesh back on these bags that is specifically to allow it to flush properly. Getting in and out of a boat, if this fills with water, it's quite a annoyance to handle. So the mesh on the back is purely there to let the water out. Also notice one of the loops did tangle with the zip tag end, the zip slider assist. 
uh, we're not going to install these for future models. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next episode. Thank you.